The Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Casey Marie Hertz, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at supported stomach massage. So we're diving into an exercise called stomach massage. Now, this exercise, there are lots and lots of very complex uh, cues and body positions that we wanna get our clients into that's very opposite of what they do all day long. So this can be a little bit of a murky place in the repertoire that I find a, a lot of teachers either struggle with or again, have a really hard time getting their clients into this positioning because if you think about stomach massage, what it is at its essence is a, is a very, deep squat. So you have to have a lot of hip flexion, knee flexion, and ankle mobility just to be in this positioning. Um, and then you add to that, there's lots of different spinal variations that we're looking to find, and this can become a mess rather quickly. I see lots of stomach massage where the moment the person pushes out, they lose their round back, they hang back in their lazy boy chair, doing it the way that they always do it or hanging into their arms. So what I wanted to do is show you a really simple way to teach this crescent moon shape flexion of the spine and be fully supported with uh, this nice upper core stabilization from a yoga strap. So right here, as always, we have our beautiful Smart Spine products from our mentor, Marie Jose. And I actually put two of them together and took just a regular old yoga strap and attached it at the top so that we have one long connection. So I'm gonna step off for a moment to set this up. So we take the smart spines here and essentially what we're gonna do is create a little bit of a hammock for the spine to rest into when we go into this positioning. So I have a, a red and a blue spring on, so that's uh, a heavy and a light spring, so I'm not gonna do too heavy of uh, spring tension there. And I'm gonna get the sitting bones right into the center ridge line of the smart spines. Then, from here, I'm gonna take this nice yoga strap and I'm gonna get my upper core stability going. So this is just off to the side. My elbows are facing forward my hands are pulling up. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna start by placing my feet on the bar here. Now, from this forward flexion, I'm separating my shoulder blades, really using my upper core to allow this area of my back to travel backwards into my crescent moon shape. Now, from there, I'm keeping my back filling out the smart spines as I go through the necessary foot and leg articulations. Now the idea is that the upper body from the tail to the crown of the head is maintaining this beautiful crescent shaped flexion that we always try to find in our round back positions while the legs travel through their range of motion. And I can feel in my spine exactly where I wanna hang into or where I'm pulling away from. The whole time I'm trying to get my back ribs to open up and seek out that smart spine. It's even better when these are nice and warm for the back to relax and lengthen into. So again, this is teaching the body on a very physical level where we want the spine to be and stay. This cradle positioning really teaches how to be in a gentle posterior pelvic tilt in the body and letting the rest of the spine reciprocate through that upper core connection and then seeing what type of range of motions in this deep squat position we can start to experiment with. It really demystifies this round back stomach massage positioning to really give your clients a feeling sense of where they need to be in space. This question's about do you ice or do you heat an area of the body um, if it's been injured or if it's tight? Now, 
what used to be the answer to that is that you'd want to either ice an area that's inflamed to take the inflammation down um, or to alternate ice and heat. But what we're figuring out now and what we're learning from um, now all this new information we have about how the fascia works is that icing an area actually creates more rigidity in the fibers of the fascia, making them more frayed and having less um, circulation, nutrition, and lymphatic flow in the area. Now, with that being said, if you know stumble off of a stair and really roll your ankle and all of a sudden it really blows up and swells in an acute phase, Ice is perfect, but other than that, I want you guys to heat, heat, heat. Use smart spines, use heating pads, use hot water bottles. Tissue loves heat. It helps to build hydration, more resiliency, lots of softness in the tissue so that you have more movement options. So there you go with for the age old uh, question of ice versus heat. If it's acute, go ice just for a little bit. Other than that, it's heat all day long. That's it for today. And if you have an observation or a question that you'd like to see answered in an upcoming episode, you can comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or our forum. See you next time and never stop learning.